Welcome back guys. When it comes to Teslas, build quality has always been a major point of concern for many potential buyers. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through the build quality of my own Model 3. So let's get started. As an automotive company, Tesla hasn't been around for very long. They produced their first car, the Tesla Roadster, only 12 years ago in 2008. And since then, they've produced four additional models the Model S sedan in 2012, the Model X SUV in 2015, the Model 3 sedan in 2017, and their latest car, the Tesla Model Y SUV, which just started production at the start of 2020. As the new automotive startup, many of Tesla's first cars had a wide range of issues, ranging from rust to battery issues to paint quality issues and panel gaps. Since the Model S, Model X and Roadster were relatively low volume production vehicles, these issues didn't really affect all that many customers. But when Tesla released Model 3, they entered the mass market for the first time. And this meant producing a large number of highly consistent quality cars in a very short space of time. This resulted in a massive amount of pressure for Tesla and caused a lot of issues for the first production run of the Model 3. Fortunately, three years on, a lot has changed and Tesla's latest vehicle, the Model Y, has actually entered production six months ahead of schedule. And based on the first reviews on YouTube, its production quality is excellent. So what about my own Model 3? Well, based on when I accepted delivery of the car back in January 2020, we can assume that the car was produced at some point in November 2019. Looking at the outside of the car, it was evident that there were no obvious defects. All of the panel gaps were very consistent, there were no dents or any scratches resulting from delivery, so I was very happy overall. However, there were three small minor issues which I found. The first was to do with plastic trim located on the exterior of the vehicle behind the right wing mirror. If you look at the trim, it's quite obvious that it's been positioned and glued on incorrectly with a slight tilt. You'll also notice that the rubber located behind the trim is slightly bulging. If we compare this to the left hand side of the car, you can clearly see the obvious differences. The next issue was to do with the chrome surround. If you look at the back right of the car, you'll notice that the chrome surround around one of the portal windows isn't applied correctly. You can see that there is a small gap between the chrome and the underlying materials underneath. If you compare this with the left hand side of the car, you can clearly see the difference where there is a much smaller gap on the left side of the car compared to the right side of the car. And finally, the last issue was to do with the positioning of some interior trim, which can be viewed only from the outside of the car. If you look at the right side of the car, you can see that the trim section appears to be raised further than it should be, and you can actually see some wiring components underneath. If you compare this with the left hand side of the car, again you can see the clear difference where the trim is positioned correctly on the left side versus incorrectly on the right side. Next we'll look at paint. So I've heard a lot of complaints about Tesla's paint quality in the past, so this is an area of concern for me when I first bought the car. Fortunately, in my case, I have very few issues to report. If we open up the bonnet, you'll notice some minor oxidization of the metal just in front of the latch area. And also, if you look at the left A-pillar, you'll note that there appears to be some hair or a thread that's embedded within the paint. So that covers all of the exterior issues. I'd just like to point out that none of these issues actually cause any functional problems with the car. They're all just purely aesthetic. Next, we'll move on to the interior of the car, and the first thing I'll point out are the rubber seals. If you look at the top right-hand corners of the right-hand doors, you'll notice that the rubber seal seems to bulge out a small bit. If you zoom in closely on the driver's side door and also on the rear right-hand door, you'll notice that the rubber bulges out. And if we compare this with the left-hand side of the car, again, you can see the clear differences. Keeping with issues with seals, we can see that the right rear door seal is not glued on properly and it just wobbles about. If we compare that with the left rear door, we can clearly see again the difference between a properly glued on seal and one that is improperly glued on. Moving on to the seats, the only issue I have found is to do with the middle rear seat. Seat. If you look closely at the bottom, you'll notice that there appears to be a slight indentation. This looks like it was caused as a result of a large weight which was left on the seat for too long, either during manufacturing or production. However, this has no impact on the comfort of the seat. Again, it's purely aesthetic. Aside from these two minor interior issues, the rest of the interior is definitely top class. Everything feels very solid and well put together. And this is definitely helped by the pure minimalism of the interior, since there just aren't that many components components to go wrong or to break. 
In terms of squeaks and rattles, I haven't noticed all that many. This being an electric car which drives completely silently at low speeds, it's very easy to hear any squeaks or rattles in the interior or exterior trim. In my experience, I haven't really noticed that many, but there are a few things which I'll point out. The first one I'll point out is the front passenger seat. If you're driving at a relatively slow speed along a gritty country road, you'll notice that the top of the passenger seat tends to vibrate a little, resulting in a small amount of chafing noise as a result of the fabric moving back and forth at a fast speed. This only produces a slight noise and if you're listening to the radio you definitely won't hear it but if you are driving slowly you will hear the noise over the sound of the road. The only other rattling you'll notice is caused as a result of the Model 3 sound system. The Model 3 features a very powerful 15 speaker sound system coupled with a very large subwoofer located in the rear of the car. When listening to music at a loud volume and featuring a lot of bass you'll note that the driver and passenger side doors tend to vibrate quite a lot. This is clearly evident based on this sentry mode recording which I made a couple of days back when sentry mode was engaged and the alarm system was sounded. You can clearly see here that vibrations caused as a result of the sound system are clearly evident. This vibration can in fact be so strong that it causes resonance within the speaker housings themselves resulting in some level of distortion which is noticeable. So other than those small few defects I've been extremely happy with the build quality of my Model 3. Any of the build quality issues I've had with my car are purely aesthetic and they don't affect the functionality in any way. In most cases a general user wouldn't even notice many of the issues I've pointed out in this video unless it was pointed out directly to them. Another thing to note with Teslas is that they produce continual improvements to their manufacturing process all the time. Unlike other automotive manufacturers who update their vehicles on a four-year basis with mid-cycle refreshes, Tesla actually continually update their vehicles all the time as and when new improvements emerge. This means that if you buy a Tesla today, it's quite likely that some, if not all, of the issues I pointed out in today's video may already be resolved. So that's about it for today's video. I hope you liked and enjoyed it, and if so, please like and subscribe to the channel. If I find any new issues with my Model 3, I'll be sure to make a video about them, but until then, I'll see you in the next one.